lesson is very good, it's excellent. But this particular lesson, especially since I am called upon to teach it this morning, uh, was a little tricky. Uh, it, with the faith in times, I'm sorry, check that, wrong. Faith in God's purpose. Faith in God's purpose. There we go. Uh, uh, the book of where our lesson scripture is coming from, uh, well, actually, let me give you the devotional reading and the background scripture. The name, of course, Faith in God's Purpose. The devotional reading is Jeremiah 29, chapter 29, 8 through 14, with the background scripture being uh, Habakkuk 1, uh, 5 through 2, 5. Uh, Habakkuk is, uh, was a little tricky for me. Uh, as I read and meditated and prayed and asked God, Lord, give me a correct understanding of your word so I can present it to your people with confidence, power, and conviction. Uh, this one came a little slower. This one came, uh, it was a little bit more difficult. But let me back up a little bit and say Habakkuk, Habakkuk, uh, is known as one of the minor prophets. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when you say minor prophet, uh, it's not that his word was less important from the other, uh, other uh, prophets mm -hmm. uh, that are found in the Old Test Testament, but uh, it is just listed major prophet and minor prophet just by the amount of work or the body of the work or the amount of words in the, in the book. So that's why they say they differentiate, differentiate between uh, major prophets and minor prophets. Now with Habakkuk, uh, it was, he's a little difficult. Uh, the history of Habakkuk is uh, uh, kind of tricky, mainly because he was at a time before uh, the Babylonians came in and conquered uh, Israel or Judea. Uh, he was in that position in between a lot of the other prophets like Daniel, uh, who we've been going through in the faith series. Uh, he was actually, after that, who were amongst the captors in Babylon. But this is right about the time where Israel still had a, a free reign to a certain degree and had its own king, and it's before the Babylonian rise, uh, which actually came in and actually uh, conquered and enslaved Israel. So Habakkuk is in a position where he's waiting for the Lord to give him a word. Mm -hmm. uh, as we look into the actual scripture, Habakkuk uh, chapter 2, 1 through 5, uh, it's a short lesson today. Uh, but each of the five verses uh, are very important and has a very... Uh, uh, divine meaning just out of these few verses. Uh, as I said before, Habakkuk is waiting for a word from the Lord. Uh, he is standing watch, which, you know, I, I think back to this situation as far as having the prophets, period, uh, before Jesus. Uh, the prophets were the ones who had direct contact with God. They were the first to have the Holy Spirit before uh, Jesus came onto the scene. Once Jesus came onto the scene, then we were all, we all were given access to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So at this time, uh, the people uh, looked toward the prophets as to 
hear the word of God directly, what his instructions are. Uh, at this time, uh, uh, Habakkuk uh, is waiting for a word from the Lord to present to the people. And as we read the scripture and go into the scripture, uh, I will go ahead and read. It's only five, so I'll just go ahead and just read all five. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start with Habakkuk uh, chapter 2 verse 1 through 5, it reads as such. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And I and will watch to see what he will say to me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord, number two, and the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. Number three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but that the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Number five. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, and who enlarges his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Amen. Now, this is, to say the least, a tricky word. It is a tricky word. You really have to really get down to the nitty gritty, uh, do your research, and really try to zero in on this particular lesson. But I'm going to continue to say the theme of the lesson is faith in God's purpose. Faith. Now let's start by going through the first verse. Uh, Habakkuk is waiting on a high place for the presence of God to appear to him or arrive. Uh, as I said before, this is the, the, at a time before the blood sacrifice of Christ and our own personal Holy Ghost inheritance, that the prophets almost exclusively had this access and communion with God. And then in turn were tasked to write down what God had said to them and shared with the people. So in verse 1, it is thought of as Habakkuk waiting. But let's stop right there for a second and just ask yourself a personal question. How many times have you waited on the Lord? How long did it take for the Lord to answer your prayer? Has the answer given to you from your prayer ever been not what you prayed for? This is where the faith part comes in. You know, your faith is tested when you ask for the prayer 
And this is what you hear. That is when your faith is tested the most. When God doesn't answer you directly and in the time frame you wish or wanted him to answer you. Mm -hmm. Now we all been here and going through church, everyone here I know through from childhood up to now. And I know at one particular time you've heard this term. He may not come when you want him but he's always right on time mm -hmm. now that is a term or saying that helps you in your faith when you find yourself in a position that you don't really truly understand what God's purpose is you just have to trust through your faith that God is going to work it out mm -hmm. now let us move on down to verse 2. Verse 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables mm -hmm. that he may run that read his dead. Now, if you just take this particular verse, at face value you have to think to yourself why did God tell Habakkuk to write the vision he gives him down on tables mm -hmm. so that those will run will read it now, if we just take that as face value, the words of this verse can be very confusing. Write the word down on tables? Mm -hmm. However, our Sunday school lesson planners and biblical scholars in the background teachings of the lesson describe the meaning as not tables but as tablets of stone mm -hmm. or a hard surface like the Ten Commandments or uh, other things that are written in stone. Now we know the difference between scrolls and either lambskin or papyrus to write things down. Mm -hmm. uh, at a point, certain point in time that starts to disintegrate. It starts to break down. It starts to actually, you know, go from existence. And actually for some people who didn't get a chance to read it, they have to just take it from the word of other people who have read it and pass the story on to them. Mm -hmm. But in stone, or like say the Ten Commandments, or I'll even give you an example of the uh, uh, Egyptian civilization. Uh, the Egyptian civilization has been around for thousands of years, probably one of the oldest, if not the oldest civilization on earth. But they can still go through the cities and go through the tombs and look up and see the actual writing of someone who wrote these things in this stone from 5,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So this is a particular interest to me in uh, verse 2. After you figured it out, after you change, okay, tables, no, it's not tables, they actually mean tablets. Okay. That actually gives an extra importance to the word and to the message that it will last longer for more eyes to be able to see it and understand it and as even in the Bible says that they may run to it and read it now I don't know all the the visitor information for Egypt but there are people that go to Egypt schedule yearly 
to see the wondrous writings and works of that particular civilization. But it actually, like I said, it's because of stone. That's the importance of stone. God said, I want you to, to, you to listen to this message, and when you write it down, write it in stone. Mm -hmm. So nobody can get be misunderstood. They can read it, and it will last longer. You know, which in turn will allow people to actually have a pilgrimage to go to see it. Now, this, like I said, is, uh, is extremely important for the fact that the message that God is giving him is important to the point where, uh, like I said, he puts extra emphasis on it through the stone, mm -hmm. okay. which is what should bring us running to it. Okay. Now, verse 3 uh, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, mm -hmm. but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Mm -hmm. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come and it will not tarry. Yeah. Now, in this, uh, God is explaining that the vision he's giving Habakkuk and us is that this is yet to happen, what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. It is of the future or a prophecy that is sure to come to pass. And when it does, it will speak the loudest to those who have seen it or studied it before. Mm -hmm. Which is one of the things that about God's word, uh, it's forever and it covers past generations, present generations, and future generations. In our generation, we can look back and see the scrolls and the messages and the prophecies of the prophets and the Bible and say, you know what? That came true. That came true. Mm -hmm. The prophecy about, even the prophecy of Habakkuk, Habakkuk, that he, his prophecy came true. But there are still prophecies in the Bible that are still yet to come. Mm -hmm. But those with little faith don't believe that this is going to happen. But as an example, like I said, we have the luxury in the present, but there are prophecies that the future generations, which is why it's so important to teach your family and your loved ones and anyone who will listen about this, because this is about to happen, and it may even happen in your lifetime. It may not, might be your children's or children's children, but the, the purpose of God giving us a, a glimpse of the future is a warning to ourselves, to strengthen ourselves in our faith and believing what he's saying and what he's, it's gonna come true. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you right now, I have 100% faith in what God says is gonna come true. And there's still, if you're, if you're a Bible scholar and you read your Bible, there's a whole lot of stuff, especially if you go into the books of Revelation, a whole lot of stuff that we are yet to see. But in my faith, I, you know, I may not have seen it, but I believe it 100%, mm -hmm. as if I did. You know? But that's the, the, you know, the blessing of the Holy Spirit. If you have, or once you accepted your uh, faith in Christ and accepted Christ as your personal Savior, uh, the Holy Spirit is one of the things that you will inherit if you stay and keep in God's Word. Mm -hmm. It is an inheritance. It's part of the inheritance of the, our covenant with Jesus, His blood covenant. Now, if you stay in God's grace, 
and continue to learn his word and continue to get closer to him, you will receive the Holy Ghost. And there's, there's a song I, 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 uh, about this very subject of what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, it's like a power from God. I think that's the name of the song. Uh, after you receive the Holy Ghost, you will receive power from God. Something along those lines. You know, I haven't heard that song in so many years. But that is part of our covenant inheritance once we accept Christ as our personal Savior. Uh, like I said, at verse 3, uh, like I said, it's time for us to have faith in God, which is wait on it. Mm -hmm. Wait on it. It's coming. You know, and not only wait on it, believe it's going to happen and prepare yourself. Okay. Because God, like I said, it's God's purpose. He's actually giving us uh, a glimpse as to what his purpose is. Mm -hmm. He's letting us know this is going to happen. So get ready for it. Okay. Okay. Now in verse 4, uh, it goes, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Amen. Uh, it is told to us that there will be some of us whose souls will be haughty and lifted up unjustly. But those who have faith in his word to the end will be rewarded in his truth. Mm -hmm. Which is what the theme of the lesson is. Faith in God's purpose. Mm -hmm. Keep your faith in God's word. Though some of it has yet to have come true or happened. This uh, is a very uh, strong message. Uh, it's a common theme uh, throughout our past lessons in the faith series through the winter quarter, uh, as well as uh, upcoming lessons. We're still in faith. And faith is the one thing that will keep you uh, in God's grace and God's will. Faith in his word. And as long as you keep that going, you know, uh, but one of those things are, is patience. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't say faith in the same breath without adding patience on it to describe your faith. Some of us just get tired of waiting. Some of us say, well, you know, uh, I, I just can't take it no more. I'm not going to stop doing what I want to do because when you don't hear anything, that silence, uh, you have a tendency to just, well, you know what? You know, God ain't doing his job, so guess what? I'm, I ain't going to do my job to stay in his faith. Mm -hmm. you know? But that's a common battle that every single Christian has to go through. Uh, is patience. You know, most of us have to say that our word or our last name is J.G. Uh, Wentworth. You know, I want my money and I want it now. I want my blessing and I want it now. I don't want to wait. But God's will and word and purpose is, is having you to wait. It is how your faith is tested, grounded, and strengthened, is to wait on the Lord and accept his will. Especially if you, are, you know and you are convinced that you have done God's grace, God's will, and you are not sinning, and you're not separating yourself from him. 
That way, if you can get that under control, keeping God's will, keeping God's grace, he will bless you in return. But you have to wait on the blessing. You have to be patient for the blessing. This is God per God's purpose to make you wait. Now, with verse 5, uh, that was really tricky for me. I, like I said, it was only five verses, but uh, verse 5 uh, uh, reads, reads as, Ye also, because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man neither keepeth at home who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death and he can be and cannot be satisfied but gathers unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people now yea also or and also or even and are, are God's way of saying P.S. He's saying also, I mean, as we would write in a letter after we wrote all the, the, the things down that we, you know, the main points of what we were trying to come across or give to you, then all of a sudden at the end you'll say, oh, something else. P.S. Now, P.S., believe it or not, at the end, and I'm sure uh, Minister Andrews has probably seen that at her paper, or she knows the reason what for P.S., at the end of it, it means postscript. P.S. means postscript, which means this is something extra that came in after the main body of work was either published or about to be published. Now what the scripture said was, Wine has a way of making you a proud, haughty, arrogant man whose faith in God's word is cause to fault. That in turn threatens himself and his family. Now that that's you know I'm not going to down anybody by having a glass of wine or whatever you want to do whatever I I can't I'm not going to judge. Matter of fact, I'll even admit that at one time I did it and I wanted to do it. But when I came on my Christian journey, I felt I had to give it up because of the fact that when I drank it it allowed spiritual warfare forces, enemies, to come in and distract me and attack me and try to influence me into me into doing ungodly things. Now, it's hard enough fighting the devil sober. It's hard enough. He is strong. He's been in the ring fighting human beings since the beginning of, of, of mankind. Mm -hmm. He has all the tricks. He's seen everything. Uh, and he's got a pretty good record and know how to bring us down and how to attack us when we are on our Christian journey. Now, some of us are strong. Some of us can take it. Take the wine, take the weed, take the whatever, the pill, whatever, uh, and still get through possibly unscathed mm -hmm. or with, with, you know, withdraw from the attacks of the, the, the enemy. But me, like I said, I, can, I don't do it, and I'm not going to judge anybody who does, but the reason why I don't do it is because, like I said, the devil is strong enough on his own. He don't need no help from me to attack me even more. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll put it to you like this and take my seat. Uh, uh, <clears throat> it's along the lines of the, his, the intensity of his attacks increase when you 
drink wine or uh, uh, other, you know, or, hey, I want to do this, and I want to do that, and you should do this, and won't you do that? that, that's, that that's just my personal experience. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, with that said, I'm going to actually leave the rest of verse. So at this point in time, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Tate.